New Testament reading, Matthew 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. This is the word of God for all God's people. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning when I came in, John said to me, Hassan, you look older. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I'm not just older, but I have different gender. <laughs> so to make you sure that uh, I'm Pastor Song Ho Lee, not Hassan Lee, <laughs> Hassan's uh, husband. And I want to know, because it's my first time and I'm a guest preacher, I want to know how many of you actually can understand my Korean accent. So if you don't understand my Korean accent, please raise your hand. Clever. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't understand, you cannot raise your hand. So, so I, I really want to know uh, whether you really understand me Let's test it this way. How many books in the Bible we have in this Christian Bible? How many books do we have in this Christian Bible? Many of you don't understand my Korean accent. <laughs> it's uh, 66 books. Okay, let's, let's go to the map. What is a three times nine? 27. That's right, that's why 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 books in the New Testament. 3 times 9, 27. That's why we have 66 six books total in the whole Bible. So if we summarize the total Bible in two commandments according to Jesus, what are those? If we summarize all these 66 books in two commandments, what are those two commandments? Love your, neighbor. Love, your Love your neighbor. Love your God. Great. So now you understand my Korean accent. <laughs> so those are two commandments. Love your God. Love your neighbor. Says yourself. Okay. We are going deeper now. So is our enemy included in our neighbor? Wow. This is truly a reconciling congregation. <laughs> our enemy is also in our neighbors. Jesus said, love your enemy. But when we love our enemies, when I first heard that, I thought I have to just accept them and then be patient and sacrifice my needs and desires. And I was patient and I just be quiet and I tried to get along. But it didn't work that way. After a while, I exploded and I get mad and I, and I had a big fight. So it didn't work that way. Peacemaking is not that easy. You saw the little children, they tried to make the bird, dog, and many of them later gave up and said, can I have the ready-made bird? <laughs> so peacemaking takes time, and it takes effort, and it also needs practice. So that's we are going to start today. Let me first uh, tell you a story of mine. Can we show that next slide, if you can do it? I would love to. Okay, <laughs> good. So when I came to uh, USA, I saw uh, my friends eating hamburgers. That looks delicious. So I want to know, how, how do you order hamburgers? Do you say, would you give me hamburger or something like that? And I said, no, no, just say hamburger, please. <laughs> that's easy. OK, so that's easy. So I went to McDonald's and I said, hamburger, please. They gave me hamburger. That's so nice. <laughs> English, no problem. <laughs> so, after I eat hamburger, I, I felt more coffee, so I said, coffee please. And they didn't give me a coffee. 
They said, cream and sugar? I said, why they don't give me coffee? I said, coffee please. <laughs> what do they say? They keep saying, cream and sugar? So I go back to my friend. Why they don't give me coffee? OK, let me go with you. And uh, they ask you whether you want cream and sugar, how much cream, how much sugar you want. I said, no, I, I don't want sugar. I don't want to gain weight. I don't cream. It's just flat. Then just say, no cream, no sugar. So great. So I said, coffee, please. And they said, cream and sugar, no cream, no sugar, that's fine. I drink coffee also. Wonderful. You know, when we learn one thing, we apply it to our life, and it works sometimes. It does not work many times. So love your enemies. I love them. I am patient. It doesn't work sometimes. Later, I learned there is a love called tough love. So many of you know what tough love is. And sometimes people say, you have to speak truth in love. So even though you practice love, you have to speak truth in love. And even though you love your children, sometimes you have to say no. It's like when we learn at church about <coughs> prayer, we learn this, pray to God. Knock the door, the door will open for you. And just seek and you will find it. Ask, then it will be given to you. So we ask God, Lord, please save my father, heal my mother. And after a while, mother passed away, father died. And we said, God, you didn't listen to me. You didn't answer to my prayer. That's like hamburger, please. And they ask cream and sugar, and why they don't give me hamburger? It's hamburger faith. So. When they don't give me coffee, I said, OK, give, forget it, hamburger, please. And I ate two hamburgers. <laughs> and many times I see people like that who come to church, pray and pray what they want, and then God didn't answer that. Later we learn that there are three answers. Sometimes God says yes, sometimes God says no, sometimes God says wait. Why the faith journey is so complicated? Why they don't just give me what I want? Why do they ask cream and sugar? How many cream? How many sugar? But that's how we learn on our faith journey. It is not that simple. So we have to know how many cream, how many sugar we need. And when you read the Bible, even in James, he says, even though you ask, God will not give you if you ask out of your greed or your own selfish desire. No, no, no. It's not going to be given to you. So from the first simple faith, like pray, then you will get it. That's hamburger faith. But later you know you have to ask cream and sugar according to the situation. And peacemaking is in the same way. Sometimes people say, OK, I'll just be quiet. I'm not going to say anything. Then it will be OK. That's peace faking, <laughs> not peacemaking. And then later, you become angry, and you explode like me, and say, da 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 da. And then it's peace breaking. It's not peacemaking. So one extreme side, we have flight. Another extreme, we have a fight. So people know either fight or flight. At the end, get depressed, commit suicide. At the end, become violent and kill somebody, become murderer. So to avoid these two extremes, we have to learn how to make peace. It takes time, like origami. It takes effort, and we have to learn. 
Next slide, please. So after we eat, I eat all oat. Come back to the ice cream. I don't want to miss the ice cream. <laughs> so I ate hamburger. I drink coffee. Now I want to eat ice cream. So I go there. Ice cream, please. So they said, chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry. And I said, now I learn from coffee. No chocolate, no vanilla, no <laughs> strawberry. And she was like, <laughs> and I said, why don't you give me ice cream? I said, no chocolate, no strawberry, no vanilla. I just need ice cream. And she could not give me any ice cream. So my friend had to help me out again. <laughs> Somehow, when you order ice cream, you need to find flavor. Oh, they are asking, which flavor? You want chocolate ice cream, vanilla ice cream, or strawberry ice cream? So I learned that there are many different ice creams. <laughs> and if we go to cold stone, more than three. <laughs> My favorite, caramel delight. Just in case if you want to give me ice cream, that's my favorite. <laughs> okay, next slide. So, no, 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 yes. Oh, too fast. Be patient to make peace. Yeah. We have to <laughs> so these are the flavors of peacemaking. Overlooking, direct communication, mediation, emotional separation, discipline, and restoration. Sometimes we have to overlook to make peace. We do not fight over the color of our church carpet, right? No church is divided over the color of church carpet. I have never heard the story about that. So we can over. We don't fight about the position of the piano, right? On the right side, left side. Have you heard any church divided because of that? No, no. We can just overlook those just small things, minor things. The best way to make peace is direct communication. We have to talk to the person. Sometimes the people go around and ask and tell all the other person, not the one that actually need to hear. That's not the right way. In that way, church have rumors and gossips. We just go to other person, did you hear that Pastor Lee is doing this and that? And then Pastor Lee has no idea what's going on. We have to talk directly. One day when I preach, one person stand up and ran out of the sanctuary. I thought I offended him so bad. But I couldn't stop my sermon, so I continued. And I had this uneasy feeling. What did I do? What did I say? I tried to review it over and over again, ask other people, is there anything that offend uh, Mr. So-and-so? And people say, I don't know, I don't know. I asked all the other person that they are the, the one. That was the problem. So I said, OK, I have to talk to him. Uh, Mr. So-and-so, what did I say to make you stand up in the middle of the sermon? Oh, no, Pastor Lee, I, I need a bio break. What is bio break? <laughs> you, you know, when you are getting older, you have to go to the restroom very frequently. And I just couldn't stand anymore, so I had to go. <laughs> oh, OK, I'm glad that I ask you. So brothers and sisters, ask them, why? What is the real reason? And many times, our conflict can be resolved through direct communication, if we talk to each other. Do not guess what others' feelings and ideas and thoughts are. Just talk to them. When we talk, we have to listen and find the real reason behind all those conflicts. When we listen carefully, many times we find the reason. And we can actually solve it. People come and complain about stairs. Maybe it's not the stairs that's the trouble. They have to face the reality of aging. Then we have to talk. 
If direct communication cannot solve, we need mediation. Once when I was in, in a church, I got a call around 11 p.m. at night. People usually don't call that late unless there is an emergency. So I pick up the phone. Pastor Lee, we are going to divorce. Out of blue, what are you talking about? I had a big fight with my husband and we are going to divorce. Hold on. I'm going to your house. So with my wife, we went to the house. And they said that we are going to divorce. What happened? Today is my, uh, our anniversary and my husband will forget that. <laughs> so you are going to divorce? Yeah. You know, I just said, why are you late? Because I work hard to feed all the family members. I was, I was hungry. Why don't you eat first? Because it's our anniversary. Oh, you forget our anniversary? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Your family members are all like that. And no, they are not kind. Why are you talking about my family? So <laughs> how about your family? Your family are so stingy. Why are you talking about my family? And they start uh, fighting over all these things. And they say, fine, then let's have divorce. So that's the story that happened during the last two hours. They started with the small things and becoming a big fight, having a big fight. Now, my wife took the lady, the wife, into a separate room. I took the husband into a separate room. We went to different rooms and we talked to each other. So I asked, we did the same exercise in a separate rooms. I asked the husband, so give me five things that you like about your wife. Nothing. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, five things. If it's too much, three things. Okay, um, her legs are pretty. <laughs> Can't you say something deeper, not just the, the look? Okay, she is so kind to my mother. Okay, not just the behavior, her. Married, something that she is good. Oh, she's a wonderful Christian. Good. So I wrote down, she's a wonderful Christian. What else? She's very generous. What else? She is uh, compassionate for the less privileged people. So I wrote down five things. My wife did the same thing with the wife. We come out together. And I read, start reading it. So this is how your husband think about you. You are a good Christian, and you are so kind and understanding. You have compassion for the less privileged people. And I could not even finish the five things. She start crying. Why are you crying? I have never heard of that kind of kind word from my husband. This is the first time I didn't know how my husband think about me. Good, now you know how your husband think about you. And now the wife's turn, and my wife read five things that wife said about the husband. My husband is trustworthy, reliable, he's hardworking, he always take care of our family, things like that. The husband also starts to cry. So, now do you want to divorce? No. <laughs> Why do we divorce? We love each other and we live together until the end of our life. That's good. We pray. That's the mediation. We sometimes direct talk cannot work, but mediation can work. And, uh, and they ask, by the way, when is your anniversary? And me and my wife, we look at each other, oh my gosh, that was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> We, didn't, we don't even remember when was our anniversary. And we didn't fight over it. And they realized that if you are focusing on something bigger than just your relationship, you can, you can work together. So mediation works if direct communication cannot work. Sometimes you need emotional separation. 
Once uh, one person came to me, Pastor Lee, I need to talk. So talk about her life. When I was young, I was abused by my father. I could not forgive him. And I want to hear apology from him. But he passed away. What can I do? So you want to hear the apology, but he already passed away. What can I do? For you, forgive him, not for him. For your spiritual well-being, forgive him. And bury it in the past and move on. This time, what we need is emotional separation. We have to emotionally separate the past and present and future. It takes time and work. However, we cannot go back in the, to the past and fix it. Some situations, the only thing that we can do is put things in the past and bury it and then move on to the future. Otherwise, the past hurt and wound will drag us and pulling us back and just keep us as captivities. So brothers and sisters, for your own well-being, I beg you to forgive your enemies, emotionally separate and move on. If mediation and direct communication does not, do not work. And sometimes we need the discipline, yes. Book of discipline or other disciplines. If somebody had an affair in the church, we cannot just ignore it. If somebody uses violence, hitting somebody in the church, we cannot just say, it's okay, I love you. No, we have to discipline the person and we have to use our disciplinary action. Youth workers, Sunday school workers, if there is some kind of child abuse, we cannot just ignore it. We have to use discipline. However, we also visit prisons, right? So after discipline, we continue our work and ministry for restoration. Even though the most serious criminals, they need God's grace. Because we think we are closer to the mother place and far away from Adolf Hitler, in God's eyes, we are all sinners. So we need to be saved by God's grace, and we should offer also same grace to those people who are disciplined. There are so many things. So which one is your favorite? Chocolate, <laughs> vanilla, <laughs> or strawberry? Choose one of them. Can I see the next slide? Yes. When did you run away from a conflict? That's a kind of flight mode. What happened when you ran away? When did you handle conflict in aggressive ways? That's fight mode. What happened when you break peace? When did you use one of the peacemaking ways? What happened when you make peace? I want you to think about somebody now that you need to make peace. As we sing, it starts from me. I try to make peace, it's too hard to make origami. So I try to sing peace, it's too high for me but we do not give up. We keep trying to make peace using one of the ways. And your pastor, Pastor Hesan Lee, is an expert on conflict resolution. She wrote a book about peacemaking, relationship building. So I'm glad that you are under the Pastor Lee's good care, work with her and make peace, not only here, but also in this community and in our country and in the world. 
May God use all of us. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this wonderful congregation. Use all of us. Help us to be a channel of your blessings and your peace. Now we pray for the peace on Korean Peninsula, North and South Korea. Bring peace for all of them and help them to have a unified country through peaceful means. And we pray for the peace in the Middle East, Israel and Palestine, and all the Arab countries. Help us to find peaceful resolution for all the peoples involved. So many times we remember the people who killed our families and we could not move on. Help us to bring peace in the <coughs> Middle East. And Lord, help us to make peace in our country. Republicans and Democrats, conservatives and liberals and progressives, we are all have different stance and positions. Lord, you make us differently. However, help us to make peace together. Lord, help us to make peace for our denomination. We are facing 2020 General Conference for a big resolution. Help us to be one and continuously working on the peace and unity. Bless our children who try to make peace here this morning. Make them the leaders of our country and workers in your vineyard. Use them to bring peace that we could not bring. And bless all the elderly fathers and mothers and grandparents in this congregation and in this community. Make them the role models and examples for the next generations. Help them to lead all of us with examples and with their words and wisdom. Lord, thank you for this wonderful time of sharing your love and words. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. <laughs>